Okay, good morning. Can we start? Well, thank you for being here. I'm Jesus Gonzalez Barahona, and I'm going to talk about um, the numbers of uh, four of the main cloud projects um, nowadays. Um, if you want, and if you have some device to connect to the internet, you can maybe download the slides from uh, bit.ly slash pinstack dash cloud, open cloud. Uh, there is a lot of uh, to click on them, so if, if you download, you can go to the URLs that I'm going to show uh, during the presentation. Um, this is the plan for what I'm going to, to talk about. First of all, I'm going to provide you with a, a bit of context of, uh, of, of, of myself and uh, the study itself. Then I'm going to um, talk about three main aspects of each of the uh, four open cloud systems. Uh, I'm going to talk about um, the source code, I mean, what they are producing. I'm going to talk about the process, that's how they are producing it. I'm going to talk about the community, who is producing um, those systems. Uh, then, since this, this is the OpenStack Summit, I'm going to include an extra um, information of a couple of, of aspects of uh, OpenStack, which I hope are interesting to you. And well, some conclusions, the usual conclusions at the end. So, to begin with, um, I have like two hats. One is my, my company hat. I am the founder of Viterja, a company doing um, software development analytics. And uh, it's in this, it is in this context which I um, mainly did the analysis with uh, the help of my colleagues there. And uh, I'm also at the university, Universidad de Juan Carlos, uh, where I've been working for a while trying to understand free software development. Uh, the four systems that I'm going to consider in the study, well, CloudStack, Eucalyptus, OpenStack, and OpenNebula. Obviously, there are some others, but probably these are the most popular ones if we came to open source systems that are in the, let's say, cloud infrastructure domain. I'm going to try not to talk about them in, in, in any special order, really. So the, the, the only thing there is I'm going to try to order them from, uh, let's say, less to, to more, less activity or less uh, size or whichever to more, just to easy the presentation, but that's it. All of these systems claim to be similar in some respects. Obviously, there are differences. Uh, they are not exactly the same, uh, but they are sort of comparable. All of them are free, open source software, but they have different licenses, they belong to different communities, they use different business models, and they are programmed in different languages. Obviously, there are many differences there. And uh, all of them are popular, but of course, there are different levels of popularity too, different market shares, different targets, even um, different ways of understanding what a system like this is. So, we have systems that are comparable, but it's very important that we realize that they are not really the same thing. So this is not like ranking or something like that. This is just taking four different systems and try to get some numbers from them. And the conclusion is not going to be this is better than this one, because they are too similar to be compared, but they are too different to be ranked. So that's, that, that's something that you have to have in mind during all the presentation. So let's go to the study. First of all, what we uh, tried to do, to do, what we did, and what we didn't. So we are, we are focusing on how these uh, systems are developed. So that means, as I said in the, uh, at the beginning, looking at the source code, which is basically what they produce, looking at the processes, how they are performing in, the, in, in terms of activity and some of the metrics, and looking at the community who is uh, working with this. Source code is obviously important because this is the product that you finally have. But the metrics here are going to be very simple because this is not intended to be a quality analysis or something like that. The idea is just uh, about sites, languages, things like that, to put into context the other two parts, which are, from my point of view, the real, the really important. Uh, with respect to processes, what we are going to see is how active the communities are. That's very important because the more activity, the more, uh, let's say, uh, momentum around uh, the software. And we are also going to see how big is the community and um, 
let's uh, we're going to talk a bit about its, its structure, who is contributing it. That's also important because the future of these systems obviously relies on the community. So if you look at the community, to some extent, you are seeing how this project is going to be, to, to be helped in the future, at least in terms of activity and, and, and other things. Uh, we didn't analyze functionality, so you are not going to see here the numbers of performance of the systems or how many functions they, they, they have, things like that. Uh, we didn't evaluate run, runtime performance it either, and we didn't evaluate popularity. There are other studies out there that you can consult if you are interested in that. Uh, for each of the projects, we have produced a dashboard. This dashboard basically includes the, the, the kind of information that you have um, on the top of the slide. This is the Open Nebula dashboard. You can click on the, on the URL below and you can go to the real thing. So there are many uh, different panels with information about different aspects. I'm go only going to summarize the main numbers. But you can drill down to a lot of detail if you go to the real dashboard and, and, and work a bit with it. So all of the dashboards in the main page are structured the same way. On top, you have source code management, usually Git, for all of these systems. In the second row, you have tickets. And low row is uh, mailing lists. The upper row is basically telling you how uh, the, the, the system is being developed in terms of number of uh, sorry number of commits which is the middle uh, chart and number of authors which is the chart on the right so if you look at each of, each of them you can see always on the right persons in the middle activity so for git activity is commits for uh, tickets activity is uh, closed tickets and for uh, mailing lists activity is messages sent to the mailing list on the right Column, you have then authors of Git. Uh, then you have ticket closers, I mean persons closing tickets, unique persons. And on the right, on the on the bottom right, you can see uh, authors of messages, unique authors. So if you look at those charts, you very quickly can see the evolution and the and the raw numbers. You can at least have uh, uh, an number about the order of magnitude of the activity that they are having, and the people contributing to have that activity. So I'm going to, to go quickly because I will come later. This is for Eucalyptus. If you, get, if you click on the URL again, you go to the dashboard. Uh, in this case, we don't have mailing lists, but we have Git and uh, tickets. This is for CloudStack. Again, you have Git, tickets, and uh, mailing lists. And this is OpenStack. The OpenStack, maybe you are a bit more familiar with it because it, you can find it in activity.openstack.org. And uh, again, you have the usual uh, um, uh, rows and columns. Um, just very quickly, if you only look at the left column, I'm going to put back the other slides, you very quickly can't realize the differences in volume. So this is OpenStack. Look now, this is CloudStack. Look at the left. This is Eucalyptus. Again, look at the left, and this is up in Nebula. So just a very quick view. You can see, obviously, there are differences. And those differences, have, as I'm going to talk later, matter a lot. Um, just to finish with this introduction to the study, uh, we also did a kind of transparency analysis. So the, the, the main point here is to which extent these projects are transparent, in the sense that we can really understand how they are being developed. You know that not, open, not all open source projects are providing you with, with enough information to know how they are developed. Some are developed in-house, in for instance, and you don't have any information about that. In this case, we found that all of them have public code management uh, repositories, Git, and it seems that the activity really goes on there. It's not just a matter of dumping code from time to time, but really they are using those for uh, um, development so, so that you can really measure activity by looking at the, at the Git repository. So all code seems to be there and seems to be the main place for, for uh, development. Um, in the case of OpenStack and CloudStack, all tickets in public issue tracking systems, uh, that's important because uh, both projects have as a policy that if a ticket belongs, I mean, has to do with the community, should be in the community ticketing system. Of course, there are companies with internal ticketing systems, but at the moment that that becomes an issue of the community, have to come to the, let's say, official 
uh, ticket repository or ticket system. In the case of Open Nebula and Eucalyptus, that's not that clear. Uh, contacting both, they both said that maybe there were tickets in other systems. So both are led by, by companies, so it's, it's very likely that, well, companies have an internal ticketing system for clients or customers or whichever. But uh, that only means that for OpenStack and CloudStack, activity with respect to, to tickets seems to be fair and comparable. For Open Nebula and Eucalyptus could be uh, underestimated because a part of the story goes into that. So from the point of view of transparency, um, we are probably lacking a part of the information there. Let's go to the, to the stuff. So uh, source code. Uh, this is a very basic analysis uh, of size. So uh, you can see how all of them have, well, similar size to some extent. By the way, this is July. Since July, things have changed a bit, but uh, the order of magnitude remains the same. And uh, you quickly can realize how Open Nebula, Open Nebula is an outlier compared to the others. So it's much smaller. Uh, despite of this, they claim to have similar community, si sorry, similar functionality to others. Um, I don't know why. I don't know uh, the details of the project uh, enough to know about that, but, but the difference is here. So it's not just a model of these guys are implementing a bit less functionality. So that there is something else there. Uh, with respect to languages, the mixture of, the, of each of the project is really different. So this is Open Nebula. And you can see how Open Nebula is basically uh, C++ and a Ruby thing. Of course, there's JavaScript. All of them have JavaScript. Uh, but with respect to, let's say, the server architecture, it's uh, Ruby uh, C++. If you go to Eucalyptus, well, again, you have JavaScript. You have HTML, things like that. But it's basically Java, right? Cloud Stack, it's even more clear, basically, Java. So it's almost a mono language, some Python, but and OpenStack is, well, you know, it's basically Python. There are some other things, but it's basically Python. So these differences in languages are, are interesting because um, the systems are very different because of that, because the facilities that the different languages are providing are different too, and uh, that, that means architectures of the systems are different and so on. And again, uh, it's very interesting that all of them are in the same domain because you could go there and look at how the different projects are using the different languages to provide similar functionalities and in which ways they are working with them. Some of the languages are interpreted, some are compiled. That also can make a difference. Well, as I said, this is just to put into context the rest of the study, which from, from my point of view is the interesting meat. So let's go there. Now, the process. So this is uh, basically uh, um, something that we already saw in the previous uh, uh, dashboards. But right now, we are going to um, focus on uh, activity. O on the left, you have people active. And on the right, you have activity. Uh, as I said, for Git, which is the upper part of the slide, activity is commits. And uh, for tickets, we have considered closed tickets. Uh, in both cases, you can see how there is um, um, a reasonable community. This difference here is just by looking at how people are contributing. You know that in most uh, free software communities, like 10% um, of the people do like 80% of the code. So in this case, we have used that 80% to define what is core. So these seven guys have written 80% uh, of the commits to uh, this project, uh, Open Nebula in this case. So it's a community with a core of seven developers. Regular are those that uh, contributed with from 80 to 95 percent of the commits, and well, this is the, these are the guys doing the the, the, the rest. I mean, five percent of the code. So they are, let's say, occasional contributors. With respect to ticket participants, we have also uh, characterized them between fixers. I mean, people are actually closing tickets and submitters. Submitters tell you about how many people is interested enough to uh, open a ticket. I mean, it's people involved to some extent, but they are not usually developers. Developers are those really fixing the bugs and uh, landing the code. So in this case, we have a community which is, you can see, very similar to core. This is usual in most projects. So the, 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 the number of people fixing is quite related to the number of people in the core um, developer development team because they are basically the same guys. Uh, 
Uh, with respect to activity, you can see uh, an increasing trend, but it's in the order of, I don't know if you look at the number, if you can see the numbers on the left, it's in the order of uh, 300 to 400 commits a month, which is an amount, but it's not that big amount compared to some other players that will come later. And with respect to closed tickets, I already said that maybe this underestimated, but it's in the order of 50 to 100 per month. Okay, next one, eucalyptus. Now you can see, oh, by the way, I have a bag here that I realized just a moment ago. This number should be the, the, the sum of this one, so it's 200 and something. It's the total number of developers, sorry for the mistake. You can see here a core team a bit uh, bigger, well, like three times bigger, and uh, the number of, of fixers, I said, I already said this is usually correlated, is also a bit bigger, but the number of submitters is smaller. So again, uh, probably we are not having all the activity. So maybe there are some other tickets in other place and we are not measuring them. If you look at the, at the uh, trend in the code, you can see again uh, an upward trend, but you can see um, how it is a bit bigger than the previous one. This is between 500 and 1,000. So this is the 1,000 line, right, per month. And this is the number of tickets closed. So the, the chart by itself shows that there are activities somewhere else because obviously uh, it's very low and it's very picked to be real. Clear the stack. We have more core developers. We have a bigger core and we have a, a very large amount of fixers. So in this community, it seems that to fix a bug, you don't really need to be in the core system. So some other, uh, sorry, in the core team, some other people are also fixing bugs. And the number of submitters is bigger too. So there are more people involved up to the point to uh, at least uh, open a ticket, which is a barrier. With respect to the trend, it is a bit more stable than the others. And it's in the order of 1,000 commits per month. This, this is the 1,000 line, right? And with respect to tickets, well, they had a peak around here, probably because they uh, were closing all tickets or something. But you can see how the, the usual uh, tickets per month, tickets closed per month, is like 50 to, to 100. And OpenStack. As I said already, OpenStack is a bit different. This is the, 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 the community and 250 people, sort of, are core at the core team. So it's much bigger than the others, but you also have much more regular casual uh, developers. And if you look at the, at, the, uh, at the numbers for, sorry, oh, oops, I'm sorry, Th this, is, this is an error because this is a uh, code review. So let's forget about that. Uh, if you look at the numbers for tickets, you have them in the dashboard, you can see how there are a lot of people closing tickets, much more than the core, and a lot of uh, submitter of tickets, a lot, uh, a lot more. This is a different number. This is now for all the projects again, numbers of tickets closed versus tickets open. This shows uh, very briefly how the project is reacting to, to, to issues. So the, the blue line are tickets closed and the green line are tickets open. So when both lines are quite close to the other, as you see here, so that basically means that they are well, sort of dealing with what's happening. So that, that's the case here. Compare this with this other, for instance, which is for eucalyptus. Again, probably we don't have all the activity for eucalyptus. But anyway, here you have a lot of tickets open. Maybe they were transitioning from some other system or something but they are not following up to this point. So this peak is a part of, the, of what they were closing that were open in, in, in this time. It's like, uh, well, eight months later. And then you can see the current trend. Well, sort of they are coping with, or with what uh, they are, it's entering. Cloud stack, again, uh, you have the two lines. Remember, blue is closed, green is open. So uh, for a while they were opened much more than closing. They had a peak here trying to close a lot of tickets and well, they recovered, but they are still a bit below what is being opened. So it's th there is a gap there. And this is uh, open stack. Do you also have a gap? And the gap is widening. This is up to, your, uh, to July. It's interesting to see how things evolved 
since then, and you can look at them in the dashboard. But basically, the gap is, is, is still there. Having a gap is natural, because you, in many cases, you have old tickets that you are really not, never going to close. At some point, you are going to close them because they are just too old, for instance. So there is always some gap. Uh, it would be interesting to have a more detailed study, and you have information in the dashboard, to try to realize whether the, the gap is it's meaning something else, like you are not really coping with all the open issues that people are, are opening. Well, now let's talk about the community. Uh, this is the core team of a time, semester by semester since, 2000, since 2012. Uh, you can see how for, for Open Nebula, the, the, core, the core team is very stable. That's natural because it's backed by a company and that's basically people hired by a company to work in the, in the system. And it's a relatively small uh, team, five, six at some point. Eucalyptus, a bit, low, a, a bit larger, around, well, you see, 15 people. Pretty stable over time, Seem, seems to be declining a bit. Cloud stack, growing up to the second semester last year. Now a bit more stable, around, 10, uh, around 30, 30 people. This number is different from the number I gave before for the core team because that other core team was for the whole history of the project. And this is per semester. So this number is usually smaller than the other one, right? And this is open stack. So growing, 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 and you are around 2,060 people during the first semester of this year. Remember, in all of these cases, that core team means those guys were contributing 80% of the commits. Uh, this is a, a different chart. This is trying to show uh, the evolution of the population. Um, picture la that uh, each of these is like a generation. So these are six months, and the two bars are trying to show how many people is entering in the project and how many people still is in the project from that generation. So the, 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 the newer generation is this one. And for, the, for, for this case, they basically got 50 new people, sorry, 15 new people, and uh, 15 of them remain. So obviously, because it's a still, uh, let's say, the younger generation, we consider that somebody left when it's inactive for six months. So basically, for, the, for those guys, all of them are still here. So uh, again, um, green is uh, a tract. I mean, people entering the community in that period of six months. And the blue is retained, people remaining from that community, from that generation. So uh, this is the next generation. So this is the, the, the six months before. You can see how they attracted uh, like eight people, but only three of them remain right now. And you can go up and you can see how for Older generations, they are still retaining some people. The old talent is no longer here. That, that, that doesn't mean that they are not uh, linked to the project somehow. They could be managers, for instance. But they are not committing anymore. And uh, well, they still are uh, retaining some people from like three years, four years ago. And they lost some people around here. Since this is a very small community, it's difficult to see anything apart from the hiring policy of the company that is driving the project, right? The next one, you start to see a bit more things because there are more uh, numbers. The community is a bit bigger. So you can see how, again, obviously for the last generation, all of them are still here. Uh, they, are attracted, they attracted like 15 people. Uh, but then you can see uh, how they were, remember this is attracted, they were attracting a lot of people in the past. They are not attracting that much people now. And they're retaining some of them, but they are retaining very badly from the older generations. That's very regular. So having somebody four years in the same project is not that common. Depends on the project, of course, but well. This is cloud stack. The community is bigger. We can see how they are, they are attracting um, on very stable, uh, stable numbers for the last two years, these uh, green uh, lines around here, and they're retaining, I will say, uh, pretty well. So you will see your numbers later, I mean for OpenStack, but the numbers are very good for a community. So retaining like 50% of the people, or well, maybe 30% of the people uh, uh, in one year is, is very good. Remember that we consider somebody as a part of the community if just committed once. 
considered that many people just commit once and never comes back. So those are like uh, uh, um, uh, not retained people in this in this chart. And these are your numbers. This is for OpenStack. So again, this is a current generation. Well, this is July, so this is basically first semester of this year. You attracted like 60, uh, 100 people, and all of them were still there, of course. But you can see how this has been, the, I mean, the attraction rate has been growing and growing over time, and how you are retaining very well, at least for all the history that we have here. These numbers have started to, to, to change a bit. So I, I don't have in the slides the numbers for now, but the numbers for now with respect to uh, retention of the old generation are starting to, to, to change a bit. If you are interested, we can, uh, I can see, so to you show them to you later, but you can also uh, consult them in the dashboard if you want. Now let's go to, uh, to another uh, point. I'm going to, ver to go very quickly uh, through this because it's very well known, I guess, in this the, the company diversity. Company diversity is important in many cases because you want to know which companies are supporting the community. And in this case, it's a very simple count. It's just counting commits by company. Of course, this is, this is biased for many reasons, but at least can give you an idea of who is contributing in terms of corporate support. So in the case of Open Nebula, it's basically company, uh, Open Nebula itself, which is well, sort of um, company too, because they are not really a foundation, and the university where the software started. And then, well, SUSE is there, maybe they, they made some commit. For Eucalyptus, it's basically a company thing too. So we have a, a couple of, of company cells, but it's basically Eucalyptus, a company. Cloud Stack is many companies with very low participation and one company, Citrix, with a lot of participation. This has changed right now. So remember, this is for the whole history of the project. If you take like the last year, uh, the, the, the balance is much equal. But anyway, for the whole project, this is what you can see. And this is OpenStack. Uh, this is the, the usual power law, which means that we are having a very open community. Uh, again, this is for all the history of the project. If you look at the numbers right now, they are different. But you can see how all well, Rocket Space is there, uh, Red Hat, HP, IBM, and, and, and the rest. In the, if you just look at the number of companies, you have like 50 companies active per month, which is, again, very, very interesting. Uh, this is a time zone analysis. This is just to try to figure out where people are really living. Of course, this is just uh, guessing. What we are doing is using the, the time zones in the commit records uh, to Git. And those can be uh, misleading in some cases, but in most communities, they are pretty useful to try to infer where people came from. Of course, you cannot, uh, these are time zones. You cannot say this guy comes from Europe, comes from Africa, for instance. But if you have a, lot, uh, a bit of information about the project, well, in the case of uh, this project, for instance, um, this is UTC. This is basically European time. So this company is located in Spain, so it makes sense that the developers are there. So nothing new here. Eucalyptus. For Eucalyptus, basically, you can see this is a United States thing. So uh, this is the West Coast. This is the East Coast. And there is something in, in Europe. Well, remember that time zone zero is a bit special. Some developers want to, to keep their laptop in time zone zero, uh, despite what they are or people traveling a lot. So in those cases, we are mistakenly taking them as living in time zone zero, but well, you can, you can factor that out, and well, this is basically a states project. This is CloudStack. CloudStack is much more diverse in terms of geography. Here you have the United States, again, West Coast, East Coast around here. You have Europe, and you have India, because they have facilities in India collaborating to the, uh, to the project. And this is OpenStack. And for OpenStack, you again have a lot of diversity. Again, West Coast in the States, East Coast. Of course, Latin America is somewhere there too. Europe, in Africa, if there were developers in Africa. Eastern Europe, five is India, four is Middle East and uh, Russia, part of Russia. Uh, eight is China. 
and then you have, um, if I'm not mistaken, Korea, Japan, Australia. Okay. Remember also that we have summer time zones, which mess things a bit, but you can get the idea of at least of, of the diversity. And then I'm finishing bonus track about specific things for OpenStack. This is no longer a comparison. This is just something that we did for OpenStack. So this is a code review, and this is time. Uh, one of the main concerns right now in, in OpenStack development is how people is uh, behaving with respect to code review, and how fast the project is code reviewing, and how that's impacting on time to deploy, and things like that. Well, this is the basically taking all the code reviews that you had uh, per quarter, starting in, uh, in uh, 2012, last quarter, and up to now, up to the, the third quarter of uh, this year. Uh, the time is time to review, measured as from the moment a uh, developer submits the, the change proposal to the moment that lands in the code, right? So that means several patches in the process and so on. Uh, yellow, brown is uh, the mean, and uh, blue is the median. The distribution is very skewed. That, that means that probably the mean doesn't have that, mu that, that much meaning, but well, it's there just in case. Probably the most uh, meaningful thing is the median. Remember that the median means that at least 50% of the code reviews took that time or less. And uh, time is in days, so that means that right now you are taking like one week for 50% uh, of the code reviews. So for the other 50%, you take longer, so that your mean right now is in 22 days. You can see this uh, growing trend, but if you look at the median, the median is not growing that much. So the median is pretty much stable during the last year. The mean usually uh, uh, grows because you have some code reviews that take a long of time, very long time, months. And when you factor that in, well, the mean increases. That's why probably in this case, the, mean, the, the median is more important. But if you are interested in the outliers, of course, the mean is giving you uh, more information. Now let's look at what's happening and why these numbers. Uh, this is uh, patch sets per chain set. So how many rounds do we have here? Of course, remember that the round can be triggered because of automatic validation or code reviewing or something like that. But the fact is that the developer submits something and have to submit again. How many times? So right now, the median is like three times. Uh, the mean is higher, five and something. Here you are pretty stable in both mean and median. So that means that the number of iterations is not growing very much. So we don't have the culprit here of the increase in the numbers. If we look here, we have a clue about, about what's happening. This is how much time you can say this is devoted, th this is due to the reviewer, and how much time is, is due to the developer. Because remember that I submit something as a developer, I have to wait until the review uh, finishes. At some point, the review finishes, and they say, submit a new patch set, and I have to submit it. And I, I, there is some time now counting on my side. Okay? So in this case, you have waiting for reviewer on the left, and waiting for submitting on the right. And you can see how waiting for submitter is pretty much stable but growing a bit, but waiting for reviewer has been growing up to uh, the second quarter this year. Interestingly enough, during the third quarter of this year, it uh, got lower both in median and in mean, which basically means reviewer reviewers are performing better. They are attending reviewers quicker than they were doing before. So the, it seems that there is a problem starting to be controlled. On the side of the developer, the mean is not growing, but if you look at the median, the median is growing a bit, but not significantly. And just to finish this uh, specific OpenStack analysis, this is time zone analysis, specific for OpenStack, and I wanted to show you this one because this shows the differences between 2010 and below 2014, wow, well, that's now. So you can see how this project started to be mostly a, a state thing with some European contributions. Remember, this is time zone zero, which is a bit special, so not necessarily all of those are really living in time zone zero. Right now, it's much more diverse. Asia entered, 
Europe is having a, 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 a higher share, especially Eastern Europe and Russia, around here. And the, the, the variation in the states also changed a bit. Now you have more development in the, in the West Coast that you had, right? And um, this is all with respect to the analysis. Just final remarks. Of course, there are many differences. You already saw them. Epinestatic activity and community are clearly different from the others. Remember, that doesn't mean necessarily that the epinestatic is better or worse. That means it's different. It's much more uh, uh, large than the others in all metric that you can measure. But as I said, depending on what you mean, what you are interested in, that could be good or bad. Look at the details. You have the dashboards and uh, you have the databases. You can even download the databases and do uh, your own queries if you want. And, and you can look for the numbers you may be interested in. The bottom line is quite important for me. All four projects have a very large level of transparency with respect to how they are developing. They are not hiding these numbers. They could, because you could develop in-house, especially for the companies. They are not doing that. Anybody can go there and do the same analysis and come to any conclusion. So that's very important because we don't have to rely on what these communities say about themselves. You can say, go there, measure them, and get our own conclusions. Um, final disclaimer, we are working for a couple of people involved in OpenStack and, 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 and uh, oh, sorry, OpenStack and, and CloudStack. All the data has been checked, could have some errors, and you have database dumps, JSON files, and everything to work with if you want. Go to the data sources entry in the dashboards, and there you can find everything. And well, in the end, I, the idea was show you the numbers. So the numbers about how these communities are developing. Just a reminder of the dashboards there, and the presentation. Well, this is the OSCON presentation, because this is based on that one. For the OSCON presentation, if you happen to stay at OSCON, you also have access to the video for it, which is quite similar for this, but uh, some months ago. That's it. I don't know if we have some time for questions yet. I think so. If there are any. Please. I was kind of wondering um, whether there are any advantages between any of the projects based on the, uh, the programming language. In the session this morning, kind of looking at um, four years um, back from OpenStack, the question was asked as to if there was a certain thing that could be changed, one thing that would be changed, what would it be? And the resounding answer was, was the actual programming language, Python. And so, and, and it was really looking at it from a scalability perspective. So there were certain things that they are now limited because of the chosen language. So mm -hmm. is there any advantage that any of the others have over OpenStack because of that language chosen? Um, um, I cannot say about advantages, but a very interesting point from my point of view is, if you look at these numbers, which is not exactly language, but it is size, Open Nebula is really very, very different. Of course, Open Nebula is not providing exactly the same functionality as the others, but Open Nebula is writing, if you look at the languages, it's basically a, a Ruby and, and, and C++ thing. So for some reasons, they have found a way for doing a lot of the functionality that the others are doing with less code. And I don't know, maybe that has, into the, has, has something to do with the, with the, with the languages. Uh, really, we should be needing much more, uh, a, a bigger sample to be able of saying this. So, I mean, from the statistical point of view, this doesn't mean anything. But, well, it's something that is very, very different if you look at the numbers there. That's uh, the, the only thing I, I can say. W with respect to the others, the size is quite similar, and the languages are basically Java or Python. So it doesn't seem to be a difference there, but the difference could be somewhere else. I mean, in scalability, for instance, I don't know, that's something that is not here. Possibly be done in certain ways, can't be done in those ways because of those, yeah. those restrictions. Yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Go there and download the slides if you want. Thank you.